the Stonewall Bar to me is a terrible place where something great happened. The swinging 60s were a time of public revolt and political action. Many marginalized groups were making great strides. Many, except for one. In many states, people could be incarcerated as a sexual psychopath the minute it was known you were homosexual. You had no legitimate right to really even exist as gay people. So there was no place where you could be sure at the beginning of the night that you wouldn't suffer an attack during the night. During that period, um, uh, beating up gays was a national sport. It was actually against the law to serve an open homosexual at a bar. It was against the law. Gay New Yorkers could at least gather at the Stonewall Inn. It was a CD bar. It was run by the mafia. They only opened it to make money for off of gay people to exploit gay people. It was the best bar at the time. And of course you could dance, the music was great. We just didn't have things like that. The bar was dirty, it was unpleasant. The jukebox was great. And the uh, drag queens controlled that. Police raids on Stonewall were often and routine until one night. On Friday night, June 27, 1969, the New York police force pulled off its biggest raid ever on the Stonewall Inn. They immediately ran into resistance from the transvestites who uh, were mouthing off to them, saying things like, I have my civil rights too, don't touch me, get your hands off me. A friend called Jerry to tell him about the raid. His exact words were, it's Miss Who's, there's a riot at the Stonewall, get down here right now. The angry crowd pelted the police with bottles and rocks. And as we kept pushing them backwards, they were laughing nervously, but it seemed to get more serious, and we pushed them back into the bar. The police were stunned. I mean, those were the riot police at a gay bar, unheard of. There were thousands of people involved out in the streets opposing the police. Nothing like that had ever happened before. And then this one queen, Miss New Orleans, was very skinny. She was so outraged, she started grabbing a meter and almost single-handedly draw the meter out of the street. And then these queens use it as a battering ram. This is what shocked me. And I said, my God. The definitive turning point came when a lesbian had been inside the bar uh, and was being roughed up by the police as they took her out of the bar into a patrol wagon. She also said to the onlooker, she says, why don't you guys do something? And then everything went crazy. The crowd erupted into an on-again, off-again fight against the cops. I got there about an hour after it started. The scene that I was focused on, which I'll never forget, was the famous line where all the drag queens were doing a Rockettes kick line, singing, we are the Stonewall girls, we wear our hair in curls. We wear our dungarees above our Nelly knees. When it comes to boys, we merely hip my toe. And that's when it made. That was enough of them. <laughs> the cops just got us. Well, I said to myself, heaven has arrived. The thing that was going through my head was good. Finally, why not? I spent the whole rest of the night throwing rocks and making uh, um, lame attempts at turning over cars, and it was a ball. These were our sisters. They were all fighting, and I couldn't walk away. I didn't want to walk away. I remember it being fabulous, or as I say, fabulous. Gays fought back that night, I think, because of a string of assaults. It, it was building up. It was the first time that most of us actually got to vent our anger. From the fighting, a movement was born. If it had just been those nights of uh, rioting and, and outrage, and nothing followed it, um, nothing would have changed. The first gay rights organizations were created after Stonewall. We put on dances that were by and for the gay community. We built up a huge uh, treasury. It was used to start the first gay community center. A year after the riots, the group marked the occasion with a march. We decided that the march should start around Stonewall on Christopher Street and march up to Central Park. We had threats. 
We were scared. We often refer to it as the first run because we went so fast. By the time that we got to the, to the uh, park and I turned around, it was unbelievable. It was one of the great moments of my life. I get chills just thinking about it because in one year, we went from a bunch of hidden people who fought back one night in the dark to thousands of people marching in the sunlight into Central Park as proud, openly gay and lesbian people. When I die, that'll be one of the things I'm gonna remember most. And with those first steps, the modern Pride Parade began. Mm -hmm.